We have a special guest that no one knows except for me. Um, we have invited um, Dr. Mark Calabria. He is the chief economist for the vice president of the United States, Mike Pence. Um, the vice president, um, we invited him uh, to join us today, um, but he is out um, doing his job and debating health care in Tennessee today. So he has sent um, Mark to come, and um, the vice president does have a long track record um, and a life um, of public service uh, supporting economic growth and innovation, and we believe and hope that blockchain technology um, will be a part of that. Um, I, I do have a little bit of a history um, with Dr. Calabria. Um, he's formerly um, with Cato. And uh, just a couple years ago, we traveled to South by Southwest together and did a panel on blockchain. So we are very honored to have Dr. Mark Calabria address us at the DC Blockchain Summit. I want to first, of course, thank, thank Perry Ann, who's been a great friend for, for a number of years, and thank the Chamber for the invitation. Of course, uh, their willingness to squeeze me at the last minute and, and your willingness to be indulgent uh, at the last few minutes. You know, first of all, I do want to convey the Vice President's appreciation for the, for the important work you do. Uh, we recognize the critical role that financial and digital innovation plays in the American economy. Uh, and so I do want to emphasize uh, we are an administration that wants to foster a dynamic, growing economy. I think we also recognize that you know, uh, we're not necessarily the innovators. What we can really do is try to get out of the way and figure out where government stops you from being an innovator. Uh, and that's going to be our big focus. Uh, let me also say uh, I am cognizant of the fact that I am the last thing standing between you and the reception and potentially an open bar. So I'm going to keep my remarks uh, quite brief. Uh, because, uh, again, the importance of, of me being here is to convey to you how important we think this area is. Uh, not for me necessarily as anything brilliant. Um, uh, well, let me also say what an honor it's been uh, looking over the distinguished list of rosters of speakers. I think you've tr had a truly great number of innovators uh, appear today, and I'm very humbled uh, to be able to wrap up the day. Uh, I think it really demonstrates the influence and respect that the Digital Chamber of Commerce and Perian have been able to build in a short number of years. Uh, as someone who's been in Washington uh, way too long, uh, I can say this is almost unprecedented, in my opinion, to build such an organization like this with this kind of influence in this short amount of time. Uh, organizations that have been around for 10 times as long don't have this kind of influence. So I really do want to compliment Perry on, on what's been done there. Um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what one of the things that is high on our uh, agenda, uh, which is uh, reform of our financial regulatory system. Uh, I'll remind you that the president laid out a set of principles in February along this. Uh, there are seven principles. I'm not going to talk about all my actions. I want to really talk about one of them that I think is particularly important uh, for this area, and that's for, to create a financial system that, quote, empowers Americans to make independent financial decisions and inform choices in the marketplace. Uh, and there are a number of roles, in my opinion, where digital commerce, blockchain, uh, online advisory, all sorts of these systems could come in and help consumers make better choices, more informed choices. You know, I also really want to characterize that to me, uh, in a better financial system that gives informed choice is one with this vigorous competition, both online and offline, uh, so that we're not trying to pick one sector of the uh, financial system to be the winner, but we want to make sure this level playing field for Whoever's got the best product, whoever's got the best proposal, you know, can win the day. So we really are trying to be very pro-competition in that, uh, and also one where that competition allows the consumer to have a wide variety of choices. Uh, so uh, certainly in my opinion, in my experience in Washington, there's often a perspective that the consumer is not always necessarily able to make the right choice. Uh, I want to say that we start from the perspective that the consumer does know best. Uh, you know, one of the uh, examples that we've often seen is that regulators have chosen to decide what's uh, good for the consumer, even when it's contrary to law. I'll give you one example that's sort of been stuck in my claw for, for a little while, which is uh, Dodd-Frank prohibits the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau from establishing an interest rate cap. Whatever you think about that policy, that's a reasonable debate to have, but Dodd-Frank says you can't do it. Uh, the CFPB recently has decided that they've put out a rule that basically does that. 
Uh, so what we think is important here is not that this particular rule impacts everybody in the room, but that this approach to regulation where the regulators themselves don't live within the rules does approach everybody in this room. Uh, so we're aiming for a regulatory system where the regulators themselves are first and foremost expected to live within the rules of the game. Uh, I also mentioned that February's executive order directed the Treasury Secretary to conduct a report of our existing financial system in coordination with our independent financial regulators. Uh, I consider issues relating fintech to be most definitely a critical part of any decision, any discussion we have on financial regulation. Uh, and so the Treasury Department, I know, is going to begin doing listening sessions with stakeholders from across the country so we can gather views on financial regulation so that our report, that being done, of course, by Treasury, will be informed by those views and have a wide range of views uh, incorporated. Uh, is that report is scheduled for a June release. Uh, since I'm not the Treasury Department, I can't tell you whether we're going to make that or not, but I'm hopeful. Uh, the report will form the foundation of what we do in financial regulation beyond then. Uh, let me also commend uh, the Chamber's efforts in recent years at really building uh, important relationships with policymakers and regulators. I think Perry Ann has done a wonderful job at that. Really is a big influence on the Hill, Very, really is a big influence on regulators. Uh, and let me emphasize that had those efforts not taken place, in my opinion, I think we would be starting in a much worse place today. Uh, it's not often recognized, and I say this from having worked on Capitol Hill, worked on uh, policy for a very long time, we often focus on what gets done. We sometimes don't focus on what stops getting done. Uh, and sometimes there are a lot of bad proposals that are out there. Uh, and I do want to commend, I think Perianne has probably stopped a lot of bad decision making, misperceptions and myths from taking place among policymakers. Um, and so uh, that said, I expect that, that despite that we're going to have a new set of regulators coming in, I expect Perianne and I expect the chamber to be even more effective at building relationships with the new set of regulators while the old set of regulators move on. Uh, and this is certainly going to be for us at the administration the foremost attempt uh, at changing financial regulation, uh, which is changes in personnel. Um, you know, for instance, I'll, I'll mention today that the White House was pleased to announce that the acting chair of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, Chris Giancarlo, was being nominated to be the chair. Uh, Chris has been a good friend, I think, of the chamber, good friend of myself, uh, and I think has been an important voice for innovation and, and economic growth at the CFTC. So I'm, I'm really glad and delighted that we will have him there full time. Uh, as you may know, however, uh, Chris is one of two commissioners out of five. So Chris does a great job, but he needs help. Uh, we are working on getting him help. Um, we're trying to get all of our regulators up to full staffing, like the CFTC. The Securities and Exchange Commission is also at two out of five. Uh, so a lot of my time is spent trying to figure out who should be those people and what seats we should put in there. Uh, you may be aware that the president's nominee for chair of the SEC, Jay Clayton, has recently been cleared by the Ethics Office. Uh, the Banking Committee in the Senate has scheduled a hearing, and we hope that his nomination is taken up shortly. Uh, and unfortunately, I think we're in this limbo where as long as the regulators are understaffed, there really is a hesitancy on their part to make big decisions. And sometimes these decisions do need to be made. Uh, and of course, the onerous is on us to get those nominations out there and work with the Senate to get them approved. Uh, of course, there are also a number of other important vacancies at places like the Federal Reserve. There's important vacancies at the FDIC. And I know you're very much aware of uh, upcoming vacancies at the OCC, who, of course, has taken an interest in the potential FinTech charter. Um, we're going to work really hard to kind of get nominations out there pretty soon in, these, in this regard. So again, we recognize when it comes to financial regulation, personnel is policy. Uh, we recognize that there's a lot we can do personnel-wise. There are things we could try to do executive order. We'll continue to do that. There are things we can try to do very rulemaking. We can do that. Um, because to me, a lot of the financial regulation in past years have been things like by guidance, uh, regulation by enforcement, what I would say have not been hardwired into the system uh, and can be changed or we think they appropriately can be changed simply by different, by different people and different personnel. That said, there are significant limits to what we can do simply by personnel and executive order. Uh, in my opinion, ultimately, Congress will need to act to make significant changes to our financial system. Uh, I will say, don't always agree with them on everything, but I think we've got great partners, in my opinion, with House Financial Services Committee Chair Jeb Hunterlein uh, and Senate Banking Committee Chair Mike Crapo. Uh, we'll certainly try to put these issues in front of them. Uh, Congressman Henshaline is far ahead of the rest of us in terms of financial regulation. He's had a bill from last year, his Financial Choice Act. He's going to have a new version of it, uh, and we'll continue to have conversations with him to see what that should do for our financial system. Uh, we also look forward to working with uh, Chairman Crapo of the Senate Banking Committee. Uh, I'll also say as a former Senate staffer, I appreciate that the Senate um, – works at a different speed, functions a little differently from the House. Uh, you know, maybe as a former Senate guy, I might uh, 
say in some sense more deliberative than the other body. I won't, shouldn't say that too much since I know Perry Ann is a former House staffer. She'll probably give me a hard time a little bit on that later. But um, all that said, we know the Senate's going to be working uh, the next couple of months on nominations that we'll be setting up. So we expect a slower pace there. Uh, and realistically, anything we're going to get done on financial regulation in Congress is going to take a little bit of time. Um, but we're optimistic that we can get some things there. Uh, I, I do want to say uh, we certainly approach, I certainly approach with some presumptions about where our system has worked and where it hasn't. But I do want to emphasize we're not prejudging the review process. I'll also emphasize um, pretty much every new administration in the last couple of decades has at some point in the first year or two done a review of the financial regulatory system. It's quite common. The Obama administration did it. Bush administration did it before them. Uh, so it's certainly something where uh, we think it's our turnaround. Take a look at it. It's been almost a decade since the financial crisis, seven years since Dodd-Frank. Uh, obviously, in terms of technology and innovation, that's a lifetime. So it's a very different world uh, than we're looking at since the last round of financial reform was done, since the last review of the financial system was done. So we certainly think it's an appropriate time to do that. Uh, again, I do want to emphasize that while I have some preconceptions, we have some preconceptions in the administration, we are approaching this with an open mind. At the end of the day, you know, if we come find out that certain parts of Dodd-Frank or certain parts of the existing system work great or fine, We'll, 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 find, we'll be supported that. If we find other parts don't, we won't be supported in that. So I do want to emphasize we're really trying to approach this with um, a lot of listening. And in fact, a lot of what I've spent, um, I guess is only my first little bit more than a month with, with the vice president, a lot of what I've spent my first month doing is what we call listening sessions. We've had a lot of CEOs come in. We've had a lot of stakeholders come in. And we've really just been saying, tell us. Tell us what you're facing in terms of obstacles to innovation. Uh, and so that's really where we are at the point where we really want to hear from you. Um, and so again, let me say I, I recognize that our financial system is quite complex. I think our proposals are going to try to you know, address that and try to deal with that and try not to just take a simplistic approach to it. Uh, but ultimately, we know that the financial system is incredibly important for economic growth. We know it's incredibly important for job growth. We know it's incredibly important for product credit capital, which ultimately is what drives wage growth and income growth and all of those things that we want to see. So given that our perspective is that this is about the jobs, 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 the economy, the economy, we think financial innovation is a really big, important part of that. So again, let me would just say that uh, I'm simply here today to let you know that this is an issue we care about, that we're keeping an eye on, uh, and we certainly look forward as we as we move forward to hear from you and hear from other stakeholders. So again, let me turn it over to, to Perry Ann and thank her again for the opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Calabria. Um, just to recap, uh, two key takeaways. One, uh, Commissioner Chris Giancarlo from the CFTC. We've personally spent a lot of time with uh, Giancarlo. He is a massive advocate for blockchain technology. And it was at the Cato Institute, which is Mark's former employer, um, where he first introduced his do no harm approach to blockchain technology. He has toured the country explaining his proposal of how he thinks the government should treat blockchain technology from a regulatory perspective. He has now been confirmed in one of the highest regulatory positions in the country. And the fact that uh, Dr. Calabria, who now um, is representing uh, Vice President um, Mike Pence in his office, are here today to be supportive of the chamber, of the industry, and to blockchain technology overall just shows the importance of this technology. It has risen to the highest levels of government and of powers. And I can assure you, you're in the right place at the right time. And for all of our entrepreneurs in the room, for our chamber members who I know work tirelessly day after day after day building solutions, Keep on going. You're doing the right thing. And we're here to support you. Well, this completes uh, day one of uh, the DC Blockchain Summit. I want to uh, thank our sponsors, our title sponsor, um, Accenture, our gold sponsors, Block, Deloitte, IBM, Microsoft, and Perkins Coie, our live stream sponsor, Chain, um, and all of our sponsors that are recognized um, on the screen here. Um, we are hosting a cocktail reception in the lobby. Um, and I don't want to hold it up anymore. Um, you'll just walk out the doors and you'll be um, where the fun is. Um, let us know if you need anything else. Thanks so much. We'll be back here tomorrow morning.